You're listening to the I Like That Story podcast, season number two, episode number 16, The Ungrateful Getter. Today's story brought to you by Evolution Consulting, nationwide image professionals for styling, speaking, and stage. We were all made to be something. Our own unique purpose is unique to us as individuals. So let's say you find this, this purpose. What will be your measure of success? How will you know that you're doing your passion? Well, the reason I ask is tied to the story of the ungrateful getter. There was an older couple that lived next to us a number of years ago. They weren't wealthy, but they were content and they were generous. Maybe even that's why they were content. They had learned that really hard-to-learn lesson of knowing the difference between what you need and what you want and how to be generous with their abundance. In the case of Margaret, her abundance was not money, but rather her ability to host others. She was a natural at hosting. Their home was old-fashioned, sparsely decorated, but she kept it clean and tidy, and she would serve coffee the way Swedes used to make it, with a raw egg in the grounds, and serve it with cookies on a plate, very gracious, and in her presence you just felt welcome. But she did not do it for everybody. No, there was another neighbor. Margaret pointed her house out to me, and I could see it down the way. It looked closed up. I don't remember ever really seeing the person who lived in that home. She said, I had her over several times. She was a nice person, lonely, I think. We would share recipes and talk. Then one day I stopped by and knocked on her door. She answered, but did not let me in. She stood in the doorway and we talked, but she did not let me in. I did it twice more, and the same thing happened. So, I stopped inviting her over. And the way Margaret said it bothered me, and I could not quite put my finger on why. It was like she was more sad than angry or hurt. The story came back to me this past week when I realized a flaw in my own thought process. You see, we're all made to do something, to create something. And that something is different for all of us. I'm made to tell stories. Margaret made to be a natural hostess, and you are a natural at, well, whatever gift you have. Well, for years, I assumed that the value of my gift was in direct proportion to what others told me about it. In in Margaret's case, her gift of inviting her neighbor over turned out to her to be worthless because the other woman did not reciprocate it. And I've fallen into that trap many times. If others are not suitably appreciative of my gift or not suitably appreciative of your gift, what they say or do not say, well, that is how you value your gift. And when I thought about it, that's when I realized that I was worshiping an idol called public opinion. Oh. So here's what I've learned since, or as my mother would say, too soon old, Jeff, too late, schmott. The purpose is the feeling that you are doing exactly what you were made to do. And the response of others, that's fickle. They'll say too much. Maybe they'll say too little. Maybe the response will be based on their insecurities or pride. They don't want you to get a big head or they want to put you in your place. Or maybe it can even be damaging. What they say could stop you from pursuing your gift altogether. For example... There was another story of 10 people with an incurable disease. They were thrown out of town, completely isolated, and a man with a gift of healing cured all 10 of them at no cost, completely cured. Yet of the 10, only one ever even bothered to say thank you. That disease was leprosy. The healer was (laughs) Jesus. And it's a good thing he decided to follow his gift, not public opinion. The point is worth repeating one last time. The joy of creating something is literally that, the joy that you have in doing it, what you were made to do. The response of others is not important. 
It's often fickle and pride-based, and if it becomes the sole measure of your worth, it's often damaging. Well, that's my story. I do have a free newsletter. I send it out once a month, and you're more than welcome to subscribe to it. I also have a series of other podcasts that help with seasons of life. The one I'm working on now is called Peace in the Valley, and that's also available again on my website, which is ilikethatstory.net. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gould. God bless. Music